All my dear viewers, Namaste. This is an introductory video to my project exposing the PRU as an I2C SPI master controller for the Google Summer of Code 2016 under beagleboard.org. My mentors are Andrew Bradford and Matt Porter. Now let's look at the specifications of BeagleBone, that's the platform I'll be working on. Uh, so it has a 1 GHz Citara AM335X ARM based processor. It has SDR RAM uh, memory which is 512 MB. Uh, it has up to 4 GB of 8 bit eMMC flash storage on board. Uh, for connectivity it has a USB 2.0 client as well as host port. Uh, there is UART 0 access uh, via 6 3.3 volt TTL headers. Uh, these can be used for serial debug. It has an additional uh, additional two microcontrollers which are 32 bit risk architecture uh, which are called PRUs or the programmable real time units uh, it has a ethernet port a micro HDMI port and a micro SD uh, slot uh, so let's look at the project deliverables now uh, as I explained before the project aims to expose the PRU as a as an uh, I2C and SPI master controller uh, this would be done through bit banging. Uh, this would involve writing SPI master driver and an I2C adapter driver on the ARM side, while on the PRU side we would be, we would be writing firmware code to implement bit banging. Uh, a device tree would be modified to test our code. Now let's look at the advantages of exposing the PRU as a master controller. The biggest advantage is that we would get more number of ch chip selects per SPI bus. Uh, we could even get more SPI buses. Uh, this becomes, uh, this assumes paramount importance on an embedded uh, platform like the BeagleBone. Uh, we would get additional serial interfaces without the need for additional hardware controllers or wasting valuable CPU cycles. Uh, this is because the PRU is a separate core and is not affected by the Linux scheduler. Hence, there are no software overheads involved when we expose the PRU as a master controller. Uh, now these are some problems that exist with bit banging in Linux. Uh, as we all know Linux is a non-preemptive OS and not a real-time operating system. So once bit banging is started, Linux scheduler cannot be interrupted by any other task. Hence a lot of valuable CPU cycles are consumed and other important tasks will not get CPU time. Hence bit banging in Linux is a huge problem. Uh, now to explain about the device drivers that I would be writing. Uh, there are primarily two methods by which an SPI uh, adapter driver uh, could write to the shared memory. Uh, the first one is using remote proc messaging. Now RPMSG uh, is based upon the Virtuo framework and it uses the core remote proc driver to request for resources. Uh, this contains two varying data structures. Uh, Varying data, data structures are essentially made up of available and used buffers to which uh, the PRU or the ARM writes the messages and it contains the mailbox which is uh, kicked whenever either the ARM or the PRU has written so that the other controller uh, uh, can read th uh, the used buffer and uh, get the information that was being communicated to it. Uh, now this diagram uh, shows how an SPI driver would S communicate using the RPMSG core. Uh, here you can see that the SPI core uh, would were to call the SPI master driver, uh, which in turn would call the RPMSG core. So RPMSG core were to write to a available buffer in the DDR memory, and at the same time, kick the mailbox, the slave mailbox over here. Now the PRU would discover a kick in mailbox 2 and would read uh, a used buffer from the DDR memory. That's how the ARM would send messages to the PRU and then the PRU can behave as a controller and forward this message through bit banging. The advantages uh, are as follows. The RPMSD is a very well tested method uh, and this would work very well when the rate of data transfer is very low. Moreover, the RP, uh, RPMSD library is present as a, as a part of the PRU software support package. Hence, it would cut down on the time and effort and the man hours required to code a new protocol and write additional functions in the firmware. Uh, this assumes paramount importance in Google Summer of Code, where time is very limited. 
uh, there are certain disadvantages as well. Uh, the RPMSD model essentially puts a restriction on the bandwidth as the buffers uh, that are available in the VRING data structures are of a fixed size. Hence, if I were to implement, uh, if the requirement was to implement a 16-bit uh, 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 word size or a 32-bit word size in SPI, uh, we would have to code additional logic uh, because the uh, buffers are of 8-bit itself in RPMSG. So we, the two uh, consecutive buffers would have to be read. Uh, so as to implement a 16-bit uh, word size. And th the remote proc driver does not assign any fixed addresses to the buffer. So uh, essentially, the PRU has to be instructed that the first set of buffer instructions, the buffer that it receives, are essentially the parameters uh, dictating the communication with the particular uh, slave. And hence, after that, whatever it receives is the data. So if you wanted to change the parameters, the entire module would have to be loaded again. The other way uh, is using custom defined buffers, uh, the other, uh, way other than RPMSG. So essentially it would be setting, uh, flags would be set in the DDR memory and when and these uh, memory locations would continuously be polled by the PRU. So when the arm has written to a certain circular buffer whose address would be known uh, by the PRU, the arm would uh, click, uh, would kick uh, these flags and the PRU would read them uh, and when it has it, it, it receives the message that the arm has written into the circular buffer, it could uh, re uh, read these buffers and uh, interpret the information given to it. So this is a how an I2C driver uh, would uh, communicate using circular buffers. Uh, here you can see that the I2C core uh, calls the master transfer function from the I2C adapter plus algor uh, algorithm driver, and this writes the circular buffer in the DDR memory. Now the PRU is continuously polling uh, certain memory locations to figure out if the uh, arm has written to this to a particular circular buffer, and when it finds that it has, it reads, and then uh, the process of bit banking continues after this. Uh, there are advantages to this method. Uh, there are there, this method imposes no particular bandwidth and transfer rate restrictions. So we could have as large buffers as the DDR memory permits us to have. And since the data and parameters would be written in different addresses, which would be known to the BRU beforehand, we could change the parameters if required without loading the driver again. And so if you wanted to change any of the parameters pertaining to SPR I2C in uh, between the uh, message transfers, we could do that e very easily without loading uh, the entire module all over again. The only disadvantage this method has that it would take a lot of time to code and it would um, uh, take a lot of man hours to uh, test and improve efficiency and uh, this would be a very challenging task given the time uh, restrictions that GSOC puts on us. Now the firmware code. Uh, here I talk about uh, the uh, features of SPI and I2C which I would be implementing. So the serial peripheral interface uh, I would only be implementing the master mode uh, for multiple uh, CS pins the number can be defined in the numcs parameter in the device tree and a gpio toggle can be used as uh, cs i will implement all four clock phases and polarity uh, i will implement all data sizes 8 16 and 32 bits this is essentially the size of the spi shift register and my aim is to implement initial speeds of up to 10 megahertz that is uh, 10 bits uh, 10 into 10 raised to power 6 bits uh, per second uh, now to inter-integrated circuit I2C, again here I would be only imp implementing master mode. Uh, NPN transistor uh, would be used to pull down SDA and SDK, uh, SDA is serial data and SDK is serial clock. Another NPN transistor would be used to provide clock stretching. Now clock stretching is basically when a slave uh, pulls down the clock because uh, it's, it's not able to uh, match the speed at which the master is transmitting, so that has to be implemented. I would only be implementing 7-bit addressing mode and I uh, aim to implement initial speeds of 100 kilohertz that is 100 kilo the transfer rate of 100 kilobits per one second. Uh, this is the entire uh, uh, this is the entire uh, uh, project. Uh, if you wish to follow it uh, these are the two links uh, where you could uh, go and uh, see the prog uh, progress of the project. Thank you for watching this video.